Okay, I think we can start. Um, today, uh, Carmen will present uh, options for modeling the distributional impact of care policies using a general equilibrium framework. Carmen Estradis is an associate professor at the Department of Economics, Faculty of Social Sciences at the University uh, de la Republica in Uruguay. She has experience with CGE models and micro simulations applied to the analysis of trade policies, fiscal policies, and gender. Uh, thank you, Carmen, for presenting. Thank you all for attending the webinar the, in, in PEP. And uh, please feel free to ask your, to write your questions. There is a button Q and A. Uh, below and, and in the end of the webinar, Carmen will respond to all your questions. Uh, about uh, 30 minutes, Carmen will present and then we open for questions. Thank you. Carmen, please. Thank you, Anna. Thank you all for joining this seminar. Um, I, will, uh, I will be uh, presenting this uh, this is a paper that was uh, already, it's already published. Uh, I will show you the details now. Uh, it's co-authored with Marcia Fontana and Minderia Biamna Surin. Um, so the, um, this paper, this is the, this is the paper that it's already um, available if you want to uh, dig into the details. And um, this is part of, uh, of this work uh, was carried um, as part uh, of a research um, topic that was, uh, this is a, a big research project that is um, coordinated uh, at the American University with the aim to um, make a focus on, on the, the care sector and the care work and how it relates with uh, the, the, the economy. Uh, and with a focus, of course, in, uh, in, in the global south. So, so the idea is to, uh, the idea of this big project is to, um, is to develop uh, macroeconomic tools uh, and as well as uh, microeconomic um, uh, tools and, and service to, to, to try to, uh, to analyze the, the phenomenon of care uh, from different perspective, from different disciplines and, and bring everything uh, together in order to provide uh, policy uh, advice. So, so it's a very, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big project with a uh, big scope. Uh, of course, it was first uh, tested in uh, one country. It, it first uh, started in South Korea, but uh, now it's, 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 uh, it's being developed in other countries, uh, in, um, in Colombia, I think in Kenya um, and, uh, and one other country in, in Asia. So uh, if you're interested in this, in this topic, I encourage you to, to, to uh, take a look at what's been uh, done. And of course, this is, uh, this is a good setup to, to carry on uh, the work in the future. So uh, this specific paper, which I'm gonna talk about uh, in this presentation, um, focuses uh, on, on, on analyzing um, possible uh, extensions to CG models in order to analyze the care uh, in, in, uh, in, in any country. So the idea is to, to, to open the discussion to, to, to be able to adjust CG models, adjust social accounting matrices to analyze care in, in, in any country. So why care? So uh, we, first we can start with the definition of the care sector, uh, which uh, was, uh, I, I took it from, uh, from what uh, Ito Peng, which is the, uh, the current coordinator of this, uh, of this project uh, has, uh, has written in, in a blog. Uh, and the definition is that it is the sector of the economy that is responsible for the provision of care and services that contribute to the nurturing and reproduction of current and future populations. 
So this is a very wide description, uh, definition, and of course it uh, involves uh, different uh, type of services. But in any case, care needs uh, in all regions in the world um, are growing as the demand for uh, childcare and elder care is increasing. So why is this happening? Uh, it depends on the country that we analyze, but many countries have, um, we have two big phenomena. Of course, we have uh, other things. And, and now I think the COVID crisis had, has shown that that the care, uh, the care service is the care sector is, is is extremely important in order for the labor market, the paid labor market uh, uh, sector to work. Uh, it's it's very important to have a good uh, care service sector. So why um, the demand for childcare has been increasing? Because in many societies, women are more and more turning into the labor market, and uh, and they need. Uh, Care, uh, child care services to, to, to be able to, to do so. And on the other hand, we have other societies that are, are, are aging. Um, South Korea is one of these of this cases. Uh, it's, a, it's a country that has uh, been aging for uh, some years now, and it's uh, the, the, the trend, it's, it's very uh, striking. So elder care uh, demands are increasing, and, and that also pushes a burden to, to people, which are usually women that want to turn into the labor market at they can't because they have to take care of, uh, of uh, the elder um, people in the family. So the, um, uh, the care work and uh, both the unpaid and the paid care work is mostly worldwide uh, taken up by women. So three quarters of the total amount of unpaid care work uh, and, the, and two thirds of care workers are women. So focusing on care also um, implies uh, focusing on gender equality. So investing in, in care infrastructure and, and developing care policies uh, are needed to transition into more gender equal societies and to warranty, also warranty care services of quality to all population. So as researchers, um, we need tools to understand and quantify the effects of alternative approaches to care provision in order to translate government commitments into effective interventions. Um, so we, I'm thinking now of specifically of, of models. So we want to, to these models to capture the full range of gender distributional dynamics associated with alternative public spending priorities. And uh, as CG models, we know that, um, that CG models are useful tools for policy analysis. They have been applied for, uh, for many years now uh, to analyze a um, wide range of policy options from trade policy, to fiscal policy, to environmental policy. So we, we could uh, use these tools to assess care policies as well. Uh, but of course, we need to adjust this, these models that, that, that are out there. So um, the simulations uh, with a gender aware care focused CG model would allow the researcher to capture simultan simultaneously both demand side. So uh, we are thinking about direct and indirect employment generation and supply side, um, which is, could be alleviation of unpaid work constraints, effects of increased investment in social infrastructure. So we, the, the aim of this paper, it's, uh, it's, it's mostly a review of of what is out there, what, uh, what are the available models uh, with a gender focus right now, and which are the features that we could incorporate into these models from other type of models that are out there. So it's, uh, it's, it's trying to review uh, not only the, the, the available uh, gender TG models available and the, the other CG models available, but also other type of models, which uh, have some features that could be included into CG models. Um, 
So some of the features that we think uh, gender aware care focused CG models should have. Um, first of all, is the representation of public and private care sectors. Why is that? Because uh, it, is, uh, it has been found that um, care services provided by public, uh, by, by the state, by public institutions, and by private, pri private institutions usually differ in quality, in price, uh, in availability to the population. So we think it is important to have a distinct representation of public and private care sectors. Also, a uh, representation of paid and unpaid care services. So one thing is, uh, it's the, the institution that you can send your child to the schools and the, and the uh, daycare, um, and the daycare institutions. And other thing is the, the, the care work that uh, the mother and the father do inside the house. So uh, we need to account for both the paid sector and the unpaid care sector. Then also differentiating the care uh, uh, by care, the care work by care recipients. So it's not the same type of work, uh, child care, elder care, um, also um, care for other uh, people that might need like uh, sick, uh, sick uh, family members or, or, or disabled family members. They, they also require care and we, we could also consider them separately. Then it is important in, in a CG model, we have a representation uh, of labor market, of the labor market in the economy. Uh, it's important to consider um, some type of rules of operation of labor markets that affect the, the position of women. So uh, women and men are not, uh, are not um, uh, do, do not uh, participate in the same way in labor markets. Uh, and women's bargaining position usually is, uh, is weaker uh, in, most, uh, in most countries. So we should consider this type of mechanisms when representing labor markets in a CG model to consider care um, with a care focus. Then how uh, this paid work and this unpaid work relate. So how is, are the decisions uh, to, to, to participate in the labor market uh, constrained, but the unpaid work that the person needs to do at home. So uh, we need to also consider this interaction. Um, then the, there is an intertemporal dimension, uh, which is extremely important because the, the, the care that, uh, for, for example, for, for a small, uh, for a small child, the care that uh, he or she receives uh, in, uh, in, in the first years of, 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 the, of the, his or her life will affect how, uh, how it uh, will, um, for example, um, participate in the labor market in the future. So a good, uh, good quality care service uh, received in the early years will have an impact on the labor market participation in the future. Um, also, uh, we need to account for some dynamics uh, and intertemporal uh, decisions, for example, for women. Uh, uh, it has been uh, uh, found that uh, there is a kind of a penalty when women um, have children, they, 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 they usually uh, um, receive a lower, a lower wage when they uh, go back to the labor market. So this type of uh, dynamics uh, should be considered in a, in, a, in a CG model. And then some emphasis on intersectionality, because we, we see uh, there's also evidence that um, it is uh, not the same, the, 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 the care burden that uh, women receive, uh, uh, not all women receive the same care burdens or uh, or participate in the same way in the labor market. So there are other uh, characteristics of, of the women of, uh, of women that um, that affect also their uh, relation to labor market and unpaid work at home. So other characteristics such as um, ethnics, uh, 
uh, migrant status, age are also important. So we should also consider them. So in this presentation, and uh, we have a lot of things to present, so I'm not sure I will uh, cover everything, but uh, so I will present uh, first uh, how more or less, uh, which are the features that the social country matrix should have in order to account for all of these uh, features. Then um, uh, to focus on the, on the available, uh, already developed gender and care focus CG models, and then present some possible extensions to care focus CG models. So for the social country matrices, for those that work with CG models, uh, we know that are the main source of data for the CG models. And of course, they are very much interlinked. So whatever uh, representation of the economy we have in the model, we need to consider that in the social country matrix. And we also know that these uh, tools are very data um, uh, demandant. So we need, uh, uh, re we rely a lot on data from national accounts, household service, uh, for, for this type of gender specific sums. We also use uh, time use service and other sources of information. So we have a first constraint to, to develop these tools, which is the uh, availability of this information. So uh, in the case of a gender sum, um, we, we can focus on four uh, type of desegregation of accounts that are already in the sum. So the first would be to um, account for a desegregation of labor, uh, the, the representation of the different production sectors, also to analyze uh, what type of ho representative households we, we want to consider, and uh, finally, how to represent the unpaid work. So I will go for by each of these uh, uh, topics. So the disaggregation of labor, of course, it has to be, it should be done by gender. We need to account for female uh, labor and for male labor. But also, uh, we think it is important to consider other characteristics to account for this inter intersectionality that I mentioned before. So, skill is also um, in many in many countries uh, very uh, important to to consider because labor markets um, are very different for uh, skilled workers than for unskilled workers. Uh, ethnicity, migration status, age. Of course, this, um, uh, I, I, I'm presenting very widely the characteristics that we think that uh, social economy matrices and CG models should have, but uh, this is something that uh, I should have maybe mentioned before. Of course, this, this is gonna be a decision of the of the researcher and then, and the country that uh, we are focusing on. So of course, for some countries, it would be more important to include a migration status uh, um, characteristic. For example, in the case of Colombia, which is the project is is being um, developed now there, um, it, there is a huge um, flow of of Venezuelan migrants. And, and, and the way these migrants uh, um, participate in the labor market and, the, and, the, and the, their care needs and how they, uh, how they, they, they interact uh, with, uh, with the, the economy, it's, it's very distinct. So it is important to, to consider this characteristic in the, in the case, for example, when analyzing uh, care in, in, in Colombia um, in, the, in the moment. But for other countries, maybe migration it's not as relevant, and it is more important to consider ethnicity as a as a distinct uh, characteristic of workers. So now I uh, uh, I mentioned some some of the of the works that are out there, which uh, include uh, the different characteristics. For example, uh, for example, in Filipski, they consider. Uh, also migration, migration status, because they, they analyze Dominican Republic, where Haitian immigrants, um, especially in the rural sector, are important to, to consider separately. Um, 
and, and then in the case uh, of Love Friend, which is the latest uh, work, um, which also has been carried uh, uh, in, the, in, in the context of this big project that I mentioned first. Uh, for the case of South Korea, they distinguish labor by gender skills and also regularity of work. And I, I will talk about this uh, uh, later. But for sectors, uh, also it is important to consider, of course, the, the characteristics of the country that we are, anal are analyzing, but we usually differentiate uh, female intensive sectors and male intensive sectors. Um, and of course, it is very important to disaggregate services which complement or substitute unpaid care, such as childcare, elder care, health services, uh, and also paid housework. For uh, the gender disaggregation of households, uh, also there, there, are, there are different um, approaches. So uh, typically what we see in CG models, it's a, it's a disaggregation by ownership of factors of production, sometimes also by, <laughs> sorry, consumption needs. Uh, in the case of, uh, of gender, uh, uh, sometimes we see a differentiation between male and female headed households. But this might be problematic because female-headed households are a very heterogeneous group, and also a large, a large, a very large share of female population lives in uh, male-headed households. So if we um, we put uh, everything there, it's 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 a very large representative group, and it's not uh, representing some of the details that we need to capture. So we think it's important to distinguish uh, representative households by number of dependents, um, by care needs, and uh, for example, for differential access to basic infrastructures such as electricity and water. And of course, this could be more relevant in countries where not all households have a, a very um, a access to, to this type of, of infrastructure. And as an, as an example, we, we reviewed a, a, a micro simulation model that was uh, done by the United Kingdom's Women's Budget Group, uh, in which they differentiate um, the differentiation of, of households, for example, was done uh, considering working age adults in couples with and without children, single, single female and single male adults without children, working age female and male lone parents, retired couples, uh, retired single females and single males. That's a very big, uh, a very uh, distinct uh, representation of, of households, but we, we think it, as an example, it, uh, it might uh, uh, be useful. And lastly, for uh, the, the, the social country matrices, uh, the unpaid work, uh, so, Gender uh, social country matrices should have uh, the representation of an unpaid work um, and also leisure sectors. Uh, and of course, we could, the unpaid uh, housework could be and should be, maybe uh, if we are considering the, the, this care, uh, the focus on care, uh, distinguish between care work and other type of work which is uh, different. So these, uh, these sectors, which, is, uh, which are, are different to construct, are diff difficult to construct because of course they are not considered in the, um, in the supply and use tables uh, of the nat national accounts and uh, statistics. So these sectors are constructed using available time use data. So we need, we need time use uh, service in order to construct uh, these sectors and um, volume labor time inputs for each uh, uh, labor category. Uh, uh, and, and of course we have different valuation method, methods. The approach by Fontana and Wood was to consider the opportunity, the, the, the average market wage, which is the, uh, the opportunity cost for the workers uh, time. So, but in the case of, uh, I, I will, I, I can mention this now, I, I will mention it later as well. Um, when we consider care uh, as separately from other uh, housework, uh, unpaid housework, um, the approach usually is to 
to value care, um, unpaid care, uh, not as the opportunity cost, but as the, the substitution cost. So how much would it cost to hire somebody to do this work? Um, as, and, and for leisure, uh, yes, it's, it's more uh, an, an opportunity cost. So these sectors are assumed, uh, they're, they're in the SAM, they're a new sector of production. Uh, so it is assumed that they, they only use labor, they don't use uh, inputs, uh, intermediate inputs, which of course it's, a, it's a, an assumption that could be changed. Uh, and the output they produce, the sectors, is consumed by, by the members of the specific households that uh, produces it. And of course, uh, when, when we start uh, introducing the sectors in the SAM, we, we usually found that non-market housework uh, it, uh, overwhelmingly uses female time. So now for, wow, um, I don't have much time left and I have a lot of things to say. So uh, I will go very, very fast. So for the, um, the gender TG models, uh, we usually have two variants. Uh, and I will talk directly by the two system models, which include already unpaid labor representation. Um, there is a whole uh, set of models that has been carried out and mostly as uh, within the, uh, the PEP network. There, most of them are PEP projects um, in which they, they consider unpaid work, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned, I was mentioning before, as a new, as a new sector. And usually um, in the, the production function for the unpaid work, there's a lower substitution between male and female labor, assuming a more rigid division of labor. So there are more recent uh, two system models. I won't uh, talk uh, much about them, but there are different um, approaches that has been developed. And the latest one, uh, which was developed, as I mentioned before, in the, in the context of this, uh, Care and Economy Project for South Korea um, was developed by Sikowitz and Lofgren. It includes a child care and an elder care sector, both paid and unpaid. There is imperfect substitution between care producing the market and care producing the household. The disaggregation of households is based on care needs. Um, and uh, the services produced by the household and GDP activities are in perfect substitution in household demands. And there's, um, there's a feature that's interesting, which is uh, it includes a wage the discrimination uh, in the labor market. So there is a, uh, uh, there's a wage gap between male and female in the labor market, which is uh, attributed to discrimination. So, those are the models that are already there, but what, uh, what other features could be introduced to, 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 to try to capture these dynamics that I mentioned before more, more accurately. So uh, some features that uh, we could take from other CG literature is considering imperfect labor mobility across sectors. Considering informal sector, because when we analyze the care sector in many countries, we find that uh, there is a high degree of informality, of uh, non regularity of, of, of employment in this sector. Um, also, consider unemployment, or, uh, or maybe more accurately, it would be to consider part time particip participation in labor markets. So for labor mobility, there is an interesting approach by Lofren and Sikowicz uh, that develop a proximity framework because we usually in CG models, and that's I think it's a problem in CG models, we assume like a, a, an adjustment very, very fast. So when a, a sector, um, a sector expands, it captures labor from other sectors and, and workers can move from one sector to another easily. Which, um, which of course is not the case. There is adjustment, adjustment costs. Uh, I'm a professor. I, 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 I can't go and, and work easily as a, I don't know, like a, <laughs> as, as, I don't know, like a salesperson. I, I 
I'm not good at, at selling anything, so I could not be employed easily there. So I would need a training, I would need some time to adjust. So, so this proximity framework tried to capture that. And I think uh, it could, it's interesting to, to explore this possibility to introduce in a, in a gender model. Then, as I said, the informality is also important to consider. There are different approaches uh, applied in CG models to consider informality. Uh, it's the harris Stolar framework, uh, efficiency wage approach, and also structuralist CG models, which are interesting to uh, analyze because many models rely a lot on, neo uh, on neoclassical assumptions. So it's, it's interesting to incorporate these other approaches um, into the models. And I want to talk about unemployment because uh, actually when we consider unpaid work and leisure in the model, unemployment is not as easy to represent, uh, but it is important to consider part-time participation because uh, one problem that many women have uh, when, uh, when when they, they, they turn into the labor market and they also need to take into, uh, they, they need uh, to, to do child um, care work uh, for, for their household members, they, they cannot participate uh, full-time in the labor market. So it, uh, it would be interesting to incorporate uh, some way of, uh, of, of modeling uh, part-time participation. So there's uh, this uh, framework that was uh, developed by Boeters and Van Leuven, uh, in which uh, model, uh, they model participation in labor markets at the extensive and also intensive margin. Uh, so, so that's a framework that could also be uh, relevant to consider. Then we have, um, as I said, Said before, they try try to capture the intertemporal inter dynamics of care. Uh, so a dynamic CG framework has uh, advantages in capturing long-term gender effects of care policies over comparative statics models. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry. So. Um, in the existing uh, gender CG models, unpaid care work is treated as a final consumption good that enters directly into the utility function and the household, but it doesn't affect the well being of the household in the future. But as I said before, care provision has long term effects on human capacity. Uh, so it could be interesting to consider this, this, this long term impacts. So um, we we turn into other type of model to of models to see what features we could uh, incorporate into into a CG model uh, in the in a all LG model again or at all uh, distinguishes between two household activities um, and they consider this intertemporal uh, dynamics. So the model assumes that women bargaining power depends on the relative levels of human capital of household and wife. Um, so, so there is uh, an improvement in the bargaining power in the next uh, generation when the, 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 the skill level um, equals between, uh, with, between men and women without the, within the household. Then what happens with, uh, and, and now we turn into more, uh, the analysis of policies uh, for care, what happens when there is public investment in social services, uh, and, and this model that I, I didn't went into the details because I was running out of time. So this, uh, this uh, Ruggeri Laderki et al. uses a version of MAM's model with a, a gender lens in Ethiopia. And, uh, and they, they analyze, and this is a very interesting approach, how health and education outcomes are affected by, by both public and private provision of these sectors um, and with, with affect uh, productivity of other production activities. So we think that this is a framework that is very interesting to, to, be, um, to be extended to care services as well as health and education, because we, we also think that um, care provision also might have an impact on, on productivity in the economy. Um, then uh, we have uh, house, uh, human capital formation and, um, and, and 
here we have uh, this this uh, this framework which is uh, uh, within a structuralist model. So it's also uh, interesting to uh, to consider how uh, the dynamics of human capital formation um, affects uh, the 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 welfare of the families uh, uh, in the in the dynamic in a dynamic setting. Um, and finally, uh, uh, considering uh, also aging and pension systems, uh, because uh, other um, stylized fact is that older women tend to participate in the labor market for longer uh, due to lack of pension and other social security systems, uh, because the work uh, that um, many women do in their uh, life, it's informal, precarious, and uh, they don't uh, uh, have a, a pension uh, when they retire, but they, they cannot retire actually. So uh, it's interesting to incorporate also this analysis uh, in CG models. Um, uh, and, and here we, we took a look at this Inter very interesting paper by Legendre that analyzes the gender distributional effects of uh, pension system uh, in France, uh, considering eight heterogeneous social groups. So, lastly, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's um, it's the, the the question of how we want to represent the care sector. Uh, uh, this I already mentioned, it is important to differentiate between care and other domestic work. Um, and with the pair care, it's important to differentiate uh, different care services and account for uh, the characteristics in the labor market of those sectors. And of course, how are the two systems related? How uh, do women and also men uh, turn into the labor market when they uh, they have access to quality care services. How um, how that do these uh, care services uh, in the paid sector work? Uh, which type of workers they uh, employ, which are the uh, labor market conditions in the sectors. These are all features that uh, we think are important to consider. So there are many areas in which care focus uh, gen gender CG models can be improved. Of course, this depends uh, which are the features and which areas we want to develop and focus depend on the characteristics of the country of, of analysis and of data availability. Uh, we don't think all of the features should be included in a CG model that would be uh, very hard to, to do, uh, but uh, I th we think that it's important to represent in a better way labor market uh, and the interactions between the paid and unpaid work, and also the incorporation of dynamic patterns, um, household decisions, uh, uh, which have an impact on household welfare in the long run. So thank you very much. This is all the um, references and um, I'm open to questions now. Thank you, Carmi. Sorry, it took uh, a little people, bit longer. No, that's fine. It was very interesting, very good uh, topic that we need now to learn more and more because uh, I think you see we, in our country people aging and allocating labor from the families because government cannot provide, so it's a big issue right now. Uh, and I, I would like you to comment on that. But before, uh, people are asking you to include the link of the paper and the presentation, if you can, for them to to have. Yes. And I can do that in the chat box. Good, good. And there is a question, Carmen. How would you go about reflecting the opportunity cost of unpaid labor? when gender discrimination is present. Uh, the observed wages on, in other sectors may not be accessible for certain women groups. You, the question is in the chat, if you want mm -hmm. to read. Right. 
Um, yes, for for unpaid labor, this is uh, I went very I went very fast uh, through <laughs> everything. But uh, yeah, the the how to value unpaid work. Um, it's of course a big issue, and uh, and as I mentioned, it, it depends on on the on the unpaid work that you want to value. So, uh, in the latest uh, versions of, of of the gender social accounting matrices that I've been uh, I, I reviewed, um, the the unpaid care work actually is not valued as opportunity cost, but it's value at uh, at the at the at the cost of of this service in the labor market, which of course it's it's very uh, undervalued because uh, care work uh, usually it's it's undervalued in the in the in the labor markets uh, and. Um, as well as, of course, the, the 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 wage discrimination for women. So, if we consider this the, the within the household, the same care work or the same unpaid work done by men and women, usually the 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 the, the value for men is higher. So that's something that uh, we could, of course, consider for 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 valuing the unpaid work. Consider other um other approaches but uh but yeah this is more or less what what uh it's 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 being done at the moment uh carmi there is um uh some questions here veronica is asking if you could illustrate some uh, specific applications uh and there is one that they're asking you to explain uh, the unpaid work sector as a new sector. Uh, how do we include no market activities, unpaid care in a social accounting matrix? And how could we measure the effect of unpaid care, mostly done by women on the human capital of, child, of children? I think they are all related to unpaid labor. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> well, this is uh, this is one of the main uh, differences uh, for, for these uh, uh, gender aware CG models compared to to other CG models. So specific applications uh, in the in the um, in the context of the of this project, as I mentioned, the, the, there has been uh, this application for South Korea. Uh, the um, the paper. Uh, it's not uh, yet available. Um, I, I share already the link uh, to, to the paper I presented. Uh, so if you go there to, to this uh, uh, research uh, American uh, EDU, um, and you see a lot, uh, many different working papers uh, that has been published there. There is one on the social country matrix for South Korea. The one for the CG model for South Korea is not yet uh, available, but I think they're working on it. So in this case for South Korea, what they uh, analyzed, they, they developed this, uh, this framework and they analyzed um, uh, the provision, the, the, the specific policy simulations they did was uh, an increase uh, in the in the in the provision of, of public services of uh, of of childcare and elder care they separately. So on, and what what is the the effects on on labor market of course because uh, when there is more availability of, of public provision of uh, of these services um, many men also women turning to the, the the labor market for for to to because they have they have more time to 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 be able they can participate more in the labor market so so uh, they specifically they, they analyze that and i think they also like, uh, do some sensitivity analysis uh, because they have of course these uh, discrimination parameters so how they uh, women and men uh, substitute uh, labor within the household uh, and they and paid um, work within the household. So they, they analyze that. And also they have this discrimination parameter in the labor markets and uh, considering also that, um, that discrimination and how, because 
we can, um, there are some policies that could be implemented more directly, which is increase the amount of, uh, of, uh, of the, the infrastructure and social on, on, on care services uh, available for, for, for the households. But we could still have this discrimination pattern within the households. So uh, another type of policy that could be also implemented is how, if we if we tackle that, if we if we do some uh, you know like public campaigns to uh, aware, make people aware that uh, care work should be carried out uh, equally between men and women within the household, then what would be the impact on that? And, and for that, uh, the, 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 these discrimination parameters in the model would be useful. So for the how to introduce the unpaid work sector, um, it's a new sector in the economy. So imagine that just as uh, we have, we, we can think of, uh, of, of, of care sectors, uh, paid and unpaid. So we have the paid care sector, which is um, child care, uh, daycare services. So they, there is this, it's the sector in the sum, which employs, um, employs labor, as any other sector might employ also capital or other uh, factors of production. Uh, they might they might uh, also uh, use intermediate inputs, and they have an output. Now, this is a, this is the, the representation of any sector in a social country matrix. In the case of unpaid work, uh, we usually incorporate that um, as, as a sector that has an output uh, and employs labor only labor. Um, of course, uh, this is uh, an assumption that is a little bit. Uh, um, maybe hard because we know that for the unpaid work then at home and not only care, uh, it could be other type of things, cooking, cleaning, whatever. We not only use labor, we also use uh, intermediate inputs. We use some type of capital as well. Uh, so this is an assumption that could be of course improved. Uh, and this sector has an output uh, and that output, it's consumed, it's, it's only for final consumption of the households that, um, that uh, generate this output. So the, the, the sector of care employs labor, which employs, for example, female and skilled labor, and the households that, uh, in, in which this labor is uh, it's based, um, they, they consume this output. That's the way it is incorporated in the in the sum. So there are uh, many different <clears throat> PEP uh, uh, policy papers that, uh, that explain in detail how to incorporate the sector. And of course, the thing that I was mentioning before, how we value this, uh, because we need to, to, to uh, we, how we construct the sector is with uh, time use service, time use services. Um, so we know uh, from the time use services, the different, uh, the different members of the household, how, how much time they spend in each of the activities. So we need to provide some type of value. We need to value that somehow. And, 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 and that's the, the discussion I mentioned before. And also there are some papers that, uh, that discuss uh, exactly that, how to value this, this time um, of unpaid work. And uh, of course the, there are different uh, alternatives and, maybe none of them are completely satisfying because of, of this uh, discrimination of wages that, that, we, that we observe. So I see that there are other questions. Um, Sorry, Carmia, I, I was. No, it's okay. It's okay, Carmia. <laughs> uh, so I see a question about the elasticity of substitution between male and female workers. Um, yeah, I mean it could be econometrically econometrically estimated. This is as uh, this is um, problem as, as in in other elasticities of substitution in CG models. We 
we would like to have the econometric estimates for all these elasticities, but of course it's not uh, always uh, possible. So uh, sometimes we just set a uh, value and we usually for, for what, what we see in these uh, uh, gender TG models, we see a lower elasticity for the care, uh, for the unpaid work within the household than, than for, um, for not, than, the, than the paid, uh, than the paid uh, uh, work. But of course, also we have, we, we might have different elasticity substitution for paid work in different sectors. So that's something that of course we need to, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem of the elasticities of substitution in CG models. It's something that, uh, yeah, we, 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 we can, of course, then run sensitivity analysis to, to see how, how sensitive are the, the results to these uh, elasticity values. So, <clears throat> I live in a multi-ethnic country. Gender is a major issue for religious practices becoming, becomes a constraint for women. So when you say representative household, can that be a particular group? um it could it could be yeah of course uh in uh if uh if for some specific uh households um the the participation of women is 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 significantly lower due to religious uh, motives uh i would say that it would it would be important to to differentiate this type of households uh in in the social country matrix and in the model i would say so yes There are models that explain that twenty men can gap and unpaid labor gender gap. Hmm. Um, mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jacqueline, for the question. I'm thinking about it. I'm not right now. I'm not exactly sure. I can't think of any paper. Uh, that specifically uh, relates these two um, these two things. Um, you mean that there is a gender income gap, uh, gender wage gap in the labor market, and uh, an observed gender gap uh, in unpaid labor. And I I can't think of any paper right now, but uh, I, I can I can try to take a look and see. Um, if I find, so I'm not sure if there are any other questions. I don't think so. No. Um, have you seen the last one? Huh? Um, yeah. Okay. I think. Um, Every question was answered. Otherwise, they can send you a message, and probably Carmen can answer. Yeah, you can. You can write to me. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, I will uh, leave your write email, email yeah. down there. So if you, I, um, yeah, that's okay. So if you have any questions, any comments, anything you want to discuss on this topic, which I think is it's it's very interesting and very important to analyze right now, as I mentioned at the beginning. I think the, 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 the crisis we've been uh, for the last year has uh, shed very a lot of light into this problem, has shown very, um, very <laughs> clearly uh, how are these constraints on the care services uh, um, the, 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 the contradiction or, the, the, uh, or the, the tension between the, the need for care and also the labor market, um, the labor market uh, dynamics. So, so I think it's important to, to continue working on that. And I'm very glad that a lot of people are interested in this topic because I, I, I think it's, it's super relevant. Thank you, Carmi. Thank you all. Uh, I would like to invite you for next Friday to attend the webinar that we will have. I will present uh, about child labor 
uh, the issues involved in the in this topic and and how COVID pandemic is aggravating the problem. So thank you all and see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Carmen.